Hey guys, this is MJ at His Truly, locating and educating prodigals at risk in these final hours, moments, nanoseconds prior to the rapture of the church, which we know is imminent. More imminent today than it was yesterday. We are one day closer to seeing our Lord and Savior face to face, our groom. One day closer to seeing our loved ones who are in heaven one moment closer. Anyway, this channel is to locate and educate prodigals at risk. What is a prodigal? Prodigal is someone who simply believes they have forfeited their salvation when the fact of the matter is salvation, true salvation. Once you are born again of God's Holy Spirit, you can never, ever, ever lose your salvation because you didn't earn it. It was not purchased by you, by nothing you have ever done. It was purchased by the blood of Jesus and the blood of Jesus alone. Okay, you cannot sustain your salvation. You did not obtain it yourself. You cannot sustain it. Okay, so if you've wandered out there, lost and confused by a religious system, you're in good company. I was for 10 long years, but Jesus never left me. The Bible says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That is just the nature of Jesus Christ. But the enemy tries to convince us differently that God has left us, that God has forsaken us. I'm here to tell you that he hasn't. He never, ever will. I'm gonna share um, something out of Behold, I Stand at the Door and Knock, my first book. But first, I'm gonna share the gospel with you. If you are within the sound of my voice and you are not born again of God's spirit, I would not wait another second. The tribulation is being set up all around us like domino effect, it is falling. I mean, it is rapidly approaching the tribulation. If you're not a st student of prophecy, which um, a lot of people aren't, um, you know that something is happening in this world, that normal is not coming back. Jesus Christ is coming back. And the rapture of the church and the harpazo where the church is snatched out of the way and the tribulation happens where the judgment of God comes. Okay, the church is taken out of the way and God comes back to deal with Israel and the 70th week of Daniel. All right, the church is not here for that. We are not appointed to wrath, but if you're here and you're listening to me and you're not saved, born again of God's Holy Spirit, I would not wait because once we are removed, once the restrainer is removed, all hell will literally break loose. Okay, so what is the gospel? The gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to scripture, that he was buried, and on the third day he rose again according to scripture. Okay, how do we get saved? It's very simple. People complicates it. Religion complicates it. Um, we can't get the only way to the Father is through the Son. Okay, He's the only mediator between God and man. He is the only way that we can be saved, period. And A is to simply admit that we are a sinner in need of a Savior. The wages of sin is death. We are all born into a world of sin. None of us from the get-go uh, have a chance. We're born into a condition called sin. We are born into a condition called righteousness. It's not even our righteousness, it's Christ's righteousness. We don't work for that. And we don't sustain it, okay? Once we are born again, we are born again of God's righteousness, Christ's righteousness. He did everything on the cross. So you admit that you are a sinner in need of a savior, simple. And B, believe that Jesus Christ is this world's only savior and for the forgiveness of your own personal sin. And see, call upon his name. The Bible says all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Jesus Christ is this world's only Savior, friend. And you, are, you need to find that out. You need to, in your own heart of hearts, know that. Know him as your own personal Savior for the forgiveness of your own personal sins. It is imperative that you know that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. In these final hours, moments, nanoseconds, of the end of days. We are here. We have arrived. Okay, I hope you guys are doing great um, in these crazy, crazy hours. Um, 
a lot is going on right now. Um, I don't even want to go ahead and say, um, I, you know what, I post things that I find, <laughs> you know, to be relative to what's happening. And, and if you're new to this channel, welcome. Welcome to the channel family. We are a family here and um, you are a blessing to me. I love, love, love reading your comments. And we are all waiting for our Lord and Savior, for the appearing, for the blessed, our blessed hope. And we know we are moments away, guys. We know. So um, welcome to this channel. And, you know, the Bible says that when that trumpet sounds, the dead in Christ rise first. And we, this final generation, I believe, who are alive and remain, are caught up with him and ever so be with our Lord in the air. And the Bible tells us to comfort one another with these words. And so that's what we are doing on these channels in these final moments of the end of days. The end of days is simply the end of this dispensation of grace. God is about to wrap this dispensation up and the tribulation is about to ensue. And you do not want to be here, trust me. Read the book of Revelation. We are not here after the third chapter, okay? Uh, until we come back with Jesus Christ on those white horses, okay? We are not here during that tribulation. We are not appointed to wrath. Know that. Okay, so this is called the woman at the well. Uh, John 7, 38. He who believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Although I've never been a science fiction fan and hated anything that even resembling horror, that didn't stop the horror from reaching me. Enemy troops were commanded to put blinders on my eyes, only to the extent that I allowed the compromise, obscuring ever so subtly my perceptional reality. Remember, I was saved at the age of 11. If you don't know my testimony, it's the very first video on this channel. I was saved at 11, but prodigal for many years. Suddenly, my tangible reality narrowed, driven by a force greater than myself, pressing me to search for a destructive escape. In this land of torment awaited the troops that I'd invited in myself, encouraging me to blame everyone else in life for my woes, magnifying my soul's every weakness. Who would have guessed that the friends attending my party were really demon soldiers in disguise? Certainly not me, I can tell you that much. Like I stated before, that far-fetched nonsense was a mere fairy tale to me until they brought me to the edge of my night. I still shudder to think how close I came to obeying their orders. Now that I've been rescued from enemy territory, my mission has been clearly defined to reach you. I can't imagine looking into my commanding officer's face on that soon approaching day and offering him the lame excuse that I did absolutely nothing to reach you with this wealth of knowledge bestowed upon me. People are dying around me every second in this war, while I hold in my hand the very key to life's greatest mystery. I'd never forgive myself if I did nothing at all to open the door of life for as many as I can, sparing those souls from eternal sorrow. Multitudes will reject God's great love simply because they've allowed themselves to be deceived by the father of lies, the counterfeit intelligence masterminding this earthly rivalry called deception. You can't, say you, haven't, you, you can't say you haven't warned about this war, because you have. You don't have to take my word for it. You don't even know me. Take God's word for it. Remember, none of us will win this battle without Jesus Christ. Please don't let your flesh dictate your destiny. Whoever you are, I can assure you that if you haven't been washed by the blood of the Lamb, your sorrow will eternally haunt you. And this body of flesh that you once foolishly placed your trust in will be long gone. Revelation 1.18, I am the living one who died. Look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and the grave. John 2.1.7, for many deceivers have entered into this world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Yes, know that. The woman at the well. 
There she sat, the woman at the well, dressed for success. Who could ever tell? Martini in one hand, briefcase by her side. Yes, the door to worldly success had opened ever so wide. Applauded by her peers, she had won the world's respect. But what about that familiar ache she felt so deep within her chest? After all was said and done, and she climbed her highest high, she sat down at the well and began to softly cry. Startled by a presence, she slowly lifted her eyes, and there stood a perfect stranger, much to her surprise. This man said that he knew her and felt each ache within her heart. If she allowed him, he would rescue her and never, ever depart. He offered her living water, said she'd never thirst again. If she trusted him, she would never again need to seek the praise of men. Arise, woman, let us depart from this place, for our journey is long up the mountain. Take my hand and trust me, for I am your heart's true fountain. John 4, 13 and 14, Jesus said, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but everyone who drinks the water that I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. John 4, 29, Come see a man who told me everything I ever did. And that is exactly what happened to me. Jesus forgave me despite everything I ever did. Everything I ever did. And he will forgive you. He will forgive everything that you have ever done. As a prodigal, um, we are completely washed in his blood. Our sins forgiven, past, present, and future. Don't ever let anyone tell you differently. And the rapture is not a partial rapture. Jesus Christ raptures his entire body. Okay? The entire body of Christ is raptured. The spirit and the bride say, come. Come now unto Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. For nothing impure can ever approach the holiness of Father's throne. The wedding of the Lamb has come. The bride has been made clean. Be prepared to behold very soon what I have never seen. Come unto Jesus Christ, for the time is drawing nigh, when all of creation will bow to him and take that final sigh. His voice is the voice of rushing waters, and his eye is a blazing fire. My friend, the trumpet will soon be heard, and you'll discover that Satan is a liar. If you're reading these words and have not been washed by the blood of God's precious Son, repent and be cleansed before it's too late. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Matthew 25, 40, and the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to me, to the least of these, my brethren, you did it unto me. Okay, so, no, guys, that Jesus is about right here. We are almost there. We are almost there. That trumpet is about to sound. Jesus is almost, we are almost looking into his eyes. I can hear that trumpet sounding, guys. I can hear it. And you know what happened with the queen and Prince Charles is now king. The new world order has arrived. All right, I don't know if you've looked at the link that I posted, but um, yeah, new world order has arrived. And... My great-grandmother used to tell me about this stuff. Just know that we're finished here. JD for all, go to J-D-F-A-R-A-G, download the app. Go there now and listen to his prophecy updates. We're finished. Time's up. Time as we know it is up. I don't have much time tonight, guys. Um, I gotta, I gotta be kind of quick, but please know that I'm praying for you all. Um, the spirit and the bride say, come if you're not saved, guys. If you're not saved, if you're not washed by the blood of God's precious son, repent and be cleansed before it's too late. The spirit and the bride say, come. Repent simply means metanoia. Metanoia means to change your mind about who God's who God is. 
And God is not some angry pie in the sky hitting you over the head with every sin that you've done, as I learned in the Catholic school and the Catholic church. That is not the God of my perception. God is love, my friend. And the enemy will have you thinking everything but. Trust me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not come into this world to condemn this world, but that through him we might all be saved. But not all of us will, because a lot of us will believe the lie. We'll believe the lie that God doesn't love us. We'll believe the lie that, oh, why does, if God is real, then why do these things happen? Because God has given people a will. A will is the greatest gift that God has given to mankind. And I myself was the victim of another man's will to do violence. And, you know, that's, that's tragic. But there is a final reckoning. Okay, just know that. I'm here to tell you that God is real and that there is an enemy. I know that there is a devil, for his demons had me in chains, a prisoner of sin and torment that started out as an innocent game. My hands were tied behind me with handcuffs made of steel. This life was one big question mark. My, my, my nightmare was very real. I wanted to run just as fast as I could to where I did not know, hoping to escape hell's fire and find shelter away from this foe. Through my journey into darkness, I felt a hand reach out to me. He said that he was my savior, and only his blood could set me free. He promised to protect me and keep me from all harm, clothe me with his righteousness, and give my heart a song. He handed me the book of life, and his words were very clear. This is my plan for all of mankind. You'll find your way in here. Okay, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you guys. Know that. Know that. Hold fast to his love. Be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about anything. We are in the final moments of the end of days. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We are almost there, guys. Almost there. This new world order, these global elites are building these underground bunkers. The Bible says that God sits in the heavens and laughs. Like that's going to keep them safe. No. Come to Jesus. Well, it's, I mean, you still have time in the tribulation. And you can still come to Jesus. But you'll be headed, beheaded, most likely for your faith. All right. Make a wise choice, friend. Run to Jesus. Don't walk. Anyway, guys, I got to go. I love you. I'm praying for you um, soon and very soon. Soon and very soon. And how about the skies, the earthquakes and all that's going on? Um, read Matthew 24. That stuff happens during the tribulation. If that stuff happens during the tribulation, how much more, how much closer are we to the rapture? But look at the skies, guys. I see so much rainbows every, you know, so many more rainbows. I've seen more rainbows in the last couple months than I've seen in my entire life. The clouds that are so close to the earth and humongous. I mean, I, you know, I'd rather look at the sky than watch any kind of TV. I mean, it's, it's a magnificent show what's going on in the skies, the magnificent, the, the heavenlies, what's going on right now. It's magnificent. Anyway, guys, um, I got to run, but I love you guys and I'm praying for each and every one of you and your prodigals and um, just encourage one another in these final moments at the end of days. Encourage one another. Um, keep looking up, guys. Our redemption draws nigh. God bless you guys. He goes to prepare a place for us that where he is, there we may also be. We're going to be there soon. Soon or very soon. God bless you guys.